So hi, it's Matthew McAllister here and I'm at Seacast Guitars in Karlsruhe in Germany. And um, I'm going to talk to you about left hand dexterity and stamina. Um, one of the areas of guitar playing and guitar technique in classical guitar that's really especially important to be very comfortable with and have enough strength and enough flexibility is in our left hand, okay? Our uh, left hand is crucial to everything in guitar playing. Um, often it can be a little slow or a little sluggish, um, it doesn't respond quick enough, or it can take a long time to warm up. So we have to find ways and find little exercises that we can do that can make the left hand as strong uh, as it needs to be to play the guitar. There are lots of uh, technique books and technique manuals out there, uh, some of which are really useful. A very good one that I think is brilliant for younger students um, and older students, anyone to use, is the American guitarist Scott Tennant, his Pumping Nylon. It's a super famous book. Um, I would mention it now because some of the exercises that I'll use, um, the book Pumping Nylon, it sort of inspired me to make up my own exercises. Um, and I liked the way that Scott had collected all of those exercises into his book. Um, so that's a great, a great method to use. There are lots of others as well. And as long as you're uh, working with a teacher, I'm a good teacher to help you understand those exercises, then uh, anything that you can do for the left hand is, is really good. So the left hand um, for guitar, it's really important that it's nimble and it can move across the guitar with, with good speed. So some exercises I do, are just literally, I call them calibration exercises. And all I'm doing is I'm moving across the guitar, one finger at a time, and one string at a time. So I'm going from the lowest string, the thickest string, the low E, all the way up to the high E, which is the thinnest string. And it means my finger is learning, okay, the bass strings are a bit more tough, they're larger, I have to push a little bit harder to get them to really sing. And then as I go across the guitar, the treble strings are, are, are smaller, their mass is not as great and it's easy to get them depressed down into the fingerboard and make a noise. Now, notice my hand, as it goes across the guitar, it stays very relaxed, okay, and it doesn't turn away. This is really bad when you see people's arms turning out, so as they go across the fingerboard, their elbow goes up in the air, okay? There's nothing up there for the elbow to do. The elbow wants to stay nice and relaxed and in line with the fret as we go across. So I'm sort of using gravity with my finger and letting my finger move nice down towards the floor and across the string. Now I'll try that with the other fingers, okay? I'm using the second finger now and I'm at fret four. I'm just going across the guitar, calibrating the finger. I'm telling the finger, this is how much pressure you need. You don't need any more or any less than this, okay? Now, if you look at the behavior of the other fingers, they're relaxed. As I go across, the four is relaxed, the three is relaxed, the one, and I'm not letting them lift up or raise up. Sometimes with a lot of guitarists, I'll see them use, say, their second finger, and when they use it, their first points towards the roof or the ceiling or the sky or heaven, I don't know, okay? And the fourth finger does the same thing, okay? That means that when you're trying to use one finger, the brain is sending a message or the hand is taking over and the other fingers are moving. So what we're trying to do with this exercise is establish that one finger can move on its own independently. It can have independent control and flexibility, okay? So I would try the third finger. For a lot of people, the third finger is one of the weakest fingers out there, okay? It's one of the hardest ones to control. You might see some movement. You can see a little movement in my fourth finger when I play with the third. Natural to have a little bit of, of movement, of sympathetic movement from the other fingers. But what you don't want is this. That's not sympathetic. That's actually going against what you're trying to do, okay? So it's always keeping the hand relaxed, moving it across the fingerboard. Even include the smallest finger, the fourth. And you're always trying to play right behind the fret. So with the metal bar of the fret right there, you always want to make sure you address right behind the fret with every finger. So if you find your finger being far back in the fret, that's not so good. Other things that are really important to watch out for. If you see this happening, collapsing the tip joint. So on the finger, collapsing this top joint. If you see that, 
That's really bad. As you're putting the pressure into the guitar, the finger's caving in, it's collapsing. So we want to try and keep that nice and high so that we don't play and this happens. We, we cut the note short or we kill the string above by collapsing the tip joint. We're always being mindful to make sure the hand doesn't go out like this with the arm and it goes straight across. And we're playing nicely on the fingertip and you'll see the fingertip starts to get a callus. It starts to harden up, the, the, the fingers get a bit more tough. This happens more and more as we play the guitar. Okay, so how do we go further? We've, we've done a few exercises just going across the guitar. How do we really start to strengthen these fingers? Well, we can do all sorts of things. Um, quite often we have to use not one finger at a time, but combinations of fingers. So here I'm gonna show you some exercises where we go from one finger to the next. So I'm just going across the guitar again. There we go. Still moving from the lowest string to the highest, but I'm now using a combination of finger one and finger two. Then two and three. Still keeping the arm relaxed, keeping the shoulders relaxed. And moving across. Playing as close to the fret as possible. And so on. Now, there, if you hear a slightly dead note or a, a buzz to the note, you're not putting enough pressure on. So each time, we want a really good, clean note with no buzzing, no squeaking, and the hand's very much in line. Now, it's important when you practice to vary the tempo, to vary the speed. So if you listen to this, I could get very comfortable in this speed and never change it. So occasionally, Maybe double the speed a little bit, or on the way back down, we change the tempo, okay? If we get too used, too familiar, too comfortable with playing to the one speed, it's really bad, really bad for, for our technique. We, we're too uh, playing in the one tempo the whole time. And we do that with all the fingers, so if I look at three and four, moving them across the guitar, trying to stay relaxed, Relaxing the first and second fingers, varying the speed, like that. Very good way to warm the fingers up and get energy moving. So a natural um, progression to these exercises is to not pluck every note in the right hand, it's to slur the notes. So the articulations here are like hammering onto the string or pulling off the string. So if I do hammering first, So I'm playing two notes on each string. Going across the guitar. Every exercise here has been going from the lowest string to the, to the high E string. And as I play one note, I put my pressure onto the next fret and I kind of empty the, the pressure from the finger before. Which is a really nice way of keeping a nice balance between the first and second finger, transferring the energy from one finger to the other. Now, if I do this, we're not hearing the second note. So I have to make sure that the note I'm slurring to is nice and strong. And again, we can do this with each finger, whether it be second and third, first and second, third and fourth, which people find the most difficult. And then, vary the speed, okay? Try things more than one speed. Don't just fall into the trap of doing everything at the one speed. And you can, you can use these combinations as many times as you want. I'm just showing you them very short little bursts at the moment, but you could do these for five or 10 minutes to really strengthen the fingers. So a natural uh, progression of these exercises I've been showing you for the, for the left hand is to um, use that really difficult technique of barre, okay, of barring the guitar. And when we barre the guitar, uh, we're putting one finger down and covering lots of strings. So it's a very high um, tension technique. There's a lot of effort and energy put into the guitar. And often when I see people doing barres, their shoulder comes up or they're super tense trying to play the barre. So, we need to practice it away from our pieces, not just when we practice um, in the pieces do we tackle the, this issue. We, we think about it 
away from uh, the pieces of music we're trying to play. So a good exercise for the bare, and in the right hand it's super simple, you could use a, a tremolo fingering, P-A-M-I, so thumb, ring finger, middle and index. I'm going to use something slightly different to avoid uh, my middle finger, but I think tremolo is very good for, for, for most guitarists. Um, and you could pluck the notes on frets 3, 4, 5 and 6 in the third position. So G on the top E string, G sharp, A and then A sharp. Okay, so we have very simply those four notes. Okay, now with my thumb, I always want my thumb to be the first because I'm going to build a barre with each group of those notes that I do. The first barre is going to be two strings, then three, then four, then five, and then six. And I want to sustain the notes of the barre for the duration of these four notes above. So if we hear, and now I have a six string barre, I'm going to go back up, that's five, four, three, two, and then just the individual notes themselves. So, at the point of the full six string barre, my second finger and my barre have a huge distance between them, okay? And the stretch is across the guitar, not this way, fanning the fingers out up the, the fingerboard, but actually across the guitar, where I think stretches are the most complex. So again, no buzzing, no dying away of the notes in the barre, the chord is rolled and sustains for the full duration, then... And it's all about listening, listening to the quality of sound on every single note that you make. I'm doing this in third position, you could go further south, you could go to first position where it's going to be harder to barre for sure. Um, you could change the tempo. move through the notes a bit quicker, for sure that could be fun. Now a barre, most people have a problem with barre because they just put the finger on and hold it down as much as possible. But this exercise teaches you to incrementally, step by step, build larger barres. Two strings, three strings, four strings, five strings and finally six strings. And what's great about that is you're learning, okay, I only need this much pressure when I do three strings this much when I do six, and this much when I do two. You don't just think, oh, when I do a barre, I put the whole hand down and push really hard. Barre is not about that. Barre is about learning how much pressure you need for the type of barre you're doing, okay? So you might have in a piece, a big barre like that in a studious or something like this. And every time you get to that chord, you might just go crunch because it's such a hard chord. But if you do this exercise step by step, you'll figure out how much pressure you really need every time you come to those moments of barre in the pieces that you play. So hopefully um, that exercise is something that can help you start to think more deeply about that technique and, and get that technique to work a little bit better for you at home.